Hi, welcome to Old House DIY. Today we're going to be talking about dado rails. What they are, where they go, why we fit them, and we'll be fitting some. So, here we go. Dado rails became popular in the 18th century. At that time, furniture wasn't stored in the centre of the rooms, but was pushed back against the walls around the outside of the room. The chairs and such then would cause damage to the wall. So a dado rail was used to protect the wall from the back of the chair. So, how do we install dado rails? Well, let's get on with it. So how high do you put dado rail? It's a common question. Normally, it sits somewhere around one-fifth of the room height and between 24 to 36 inches. Here, we've set it at 34 inches. This helps us make our narrow corridor seem much wider because we've got a lower dark section at the bottom. First, before we start, top tip regarding this. At the moment, we've got a rather nasty standard pendant light with a single light bulb in here. Well, for work, I use lots of light. First of all, we're going to install this. It's horrible, but it's great for working with. It may be ugly, but as you can see, it's made the whole work area a lot more light. These are just simple multi-panel LEDs, sometimes referred to as garage lights, easily available on Amazon. We know how high we need our dado rail set now, so now we need to mark it out. And for that, we're going to use top tool here, laser level. Switch it on, it will project a self-leveling horizontal or vertical line at the height you choose. And you can just adjust it up and down. You'll just see it's just kissing the bottom edge of this dado, which means this line here will be at exactly the same level. And so all we need to do is mark out this line. A top tip for marking out, rather than putting a dot or a dash, if you put an arrow, sometimes called a crow's foot, you can see exactly where you need the line. A dot or a mark can be a bit ambiguous, but an arrow is always very clear. See, I've marked the line off. Right, let's measure out for this piece now. Measure twice, cut once. So, from the inside of the wall to the inside of the mitre edge, we have eight, nine, three millimeters. Make, make sure we're at the right level. Check to the inside corner, eight, nine, three. Okay, good. Right, now let's measure the angle we need to cut. We set our angle gauge or protractor at the height we need it, so it needs to be at the dado rail. Make sure we've got the angle, the ruler parallel to the wall in the right place. Lock it off. And there we go, 91.3. So half of this is what we'll need to cut for the mitre angle, not half of 90. Dado rail comes in various standard lengths, up to about 4.2 meters in length. We always need to uh, start our length cutting from the smallest possible off cut we've got, because that will minimize any wastage. So we've picked our piece. This is maybe the right length. We've got to check that it's straight. We've got to check for any defects. This piece has two knots, particularly this one. A big hole like that will be very difficult to fill, whatever you put in it to fill it. Whereas the wood moves over time, the filler won't and it will crack. So this piece is only actually good for between here and here. We've got two sorts of, mit of mitre corners, uh, inside corners and outside corners. There's a few different ways of cutting these. Outside corners are just cut by setting the 45 degree, or whatever you measure it to be, angle on the mitre saw. The inside corners you can do either with a mitre saw or you can use a technique called coping, and we'll have a look at that in a bit. But first, let's cut some lengths. Set our angle, read it, lock it off. Cut our first end. Measure, mark off, and cut the other end, making sure we get the angles right. So inside, 
an outside. This is going to be an inside to an outside joint. So I need to adjust my slide again, my compound again. Lock it off. Find our mark. And cut. And cut. Measure, mark out, and cut. Being conscious, make sure you cut the right side of the line. To cope the joint, we cut first cut a 45 degree angle, and then we're going to take a coping saw and trace out this line. So let's do that now. We need to cut at the vertical or slightly back from the vertical because the, that will give us a little bit of extra clearance. Just work our way around. Once we finish cutting with the coping saw, we end up with the coped end, which will then butt up against our other section. Like that, it gives us a little bit of room for adjusting the angle and smear a filler and nobody will ever know. Dados are traditionally nailed to the wall. To stop the wood splitting, I drill a series of small diameter holes all the way through the dado rail. Just at an angle to get it started, and then as it bites, switch to perpendicular. Too close together at the ends to help it grip, and then evenly spaced Along the bit, along the dado, you're nailing into a potentially a hard wall. Certainly, rocks behind a lime plastered wall. So it's important to make sure you get good quality nails, nice masonry nails, good diameter, small head that can take a decent pounding. We've prepped our piece. Now it's time to fit it on the wall. I mentioned nails, but here's a controversial bit: period properties. We're also going to use some grip fill, makes a real difference, makes it whole and it fills some of the gaps. So let's get to it. We put a good bead of grip fill along the back of the dado rail, particularly on the top edge where it will help squish out and blend and fill the gap to the wall. Nailing seems easy as we've already pre-marked the level with the laser. So all we need to do is hold up the rail with our grip fill, put it into position, help the grip fill to tape, and then drive in some nails. Let's have a go. Make sure our ends are all marked up as they need to be. Now our grip fill will help to hold and we'll drive in a couple of nails either side of the bent bit, first of all. They don't need to be driven in all the way because we're going to come back with a nail punch in a few minutes. But we need to get it on and get it in position. Now we're starting to bend round where the wall's bent. Now we'll come back and drive them flush with a punch. As we see, the grip fill squeezed out along the top edge, which means we with a nice clean up, that gap will be pre-filled and it will minimise the amount of corking needed. And there we have the finished product. Dado rail is now installed and primed, waiting for top coat. So there you go. We've had a look at dado rails and how we fit them. I hope you enjoyed this old house DIY video. If you did, please like, subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.